Hi there, it's Karen, and I am here with Whiskey Sour, wishing you guys a very happy Thanksgiving here in the U.S. Uh, it's not turkey day for me, I don't eat turkey, but uh, I'll find something to munch on, I'm sure, in my day. It's a pretty uneventful day for me because uh, I'm working here in the U.S., and uh, my family, what family I have left is back home, but uh, having lost my mom, you know, over, well, close to 10 years now, uh, I haven't really had the same type of family Thanksgiving for a really long time. So it's kind of a bland day for me overall, but I do use it as a time to reflect on the things I'm thankful for. Uh, something kind of cool today, though, is it is my birthday today. <laughs> uh, my birthday has not fallen, I don't know that it's ever, I've never really experienced this, having my birthday on a Thanksgiving. Of course, you know, it's happened in the past, just unbeknownst to me, but uh, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, I probably hold the world's record today for the most birthday wishes on a Facebook page. <laughs> like crazy guys, crazy. I feel so loved and uh, so nice of you guys to think of me today. It's just very cool. Uh, I started responding to them and I was responding and then more wishes would come in and I was just like, ah, <laughs> there's just so many. So thank you very much. That was really uh, a lovely thing to see just how, how many people were thinking of me. So thanks. Um, it was my friend Phil who promised me that one day I would have more than just him as a friend. For any of you who know Phil, uh, maybe you know him from MySpace or maybe you know him from Facebook, uh, I just adore him. Uh, we've been friends for a very long time now. And uh, I, I pouted and I said I was, wasn't very hopeful that I would have any more friends. And I was just thankful for him and I was going to leave it at that. And I did express to him all the times in my life where Someone would die, and then uh, somebody would be there to be my new friend, and then they would die. And it was like this recurring thing with me that would happen. And he felt that that was something that would not be a theme in my life, that that would not be that way anymore. Uh, of course, I still continue to experience uh, loss of friendships, whether through death or whatever. Uh, but I, I have so much more love around me than I ever used to, and I never thought that would happen. And I'm very thankful for you guys, just uh, for my friendships. It's just specifically what I'm thankful for. Uh, of course I'm thankful for my family, uh, but my friends uh, choose to have me in their life. And that's the best part of friendship, is that when someone chooses you as a friend, uh, that's it's, it's very indicative of how much you are loved. And um, so while I don't go by numbers, my mother always said, if you can find one or two good friends in life, and I still, you know, some people are closer than others, but I do feel more love than I ever have. And um, I'm very thankful for my relationship with my Creator. I'm very uh, thankful for uh, my journey and all the struggles that have happened. Uh, I, I don't mind getting older. I'm pretty okay with it because uh, I had a tough time when I was younger. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy overall right now and, and can't really complain too much. Uh, I found this kind of wave to ride, even though that there's struggles. I've much like when you see surfers on the Pacific coach, coast go out and go surfing, they uh, they they see the waves as a challenge, and so I'm trying to view my life that way. Sometimes the waves just overwhelm and you, you get kind of sucked in by the undertow, but I, I'm starting to view my struggles a little bit more as a challenge, and uh, I, I'm pretty okay with it, you know. I'm, they're not making me resist. That's that's probably a good way to say it. So life isn't perfect for me, but my attitude's been marinating a lot, mellowing a lot, you know. So it's it's been good. I uh, I called my blog today. Panda saves two border collies. I have a feel good story to share with you guys. Yesterday there was two border collies at a Manhattan shelter who were saved from death row. And there are many stories like this where dogs find their forever homes and so many owners have given them that new leash on life, you know, as, the, as the popular saying goes. Uh, I was touched though by the efforts of the people who were involved with this particular effort and I'll tell you why. Uh, I found it was a very focused effort by compassionate people and I witnessed this huge thread on Facebook of people coming together to make this happen. Very cool. One person in particular who you guys might know, her name is Anja, and she has a border collie named Panda. And uh, if you don't know Panda because she's not on your friend list or whatever, 
Uh, if you uh, look through, I have some pictures on my MySpace. There's some signed CDs on there, and there's one of Pan to the Border Collie with a Stever CD <laughs> beside her. Love that picture. She looks all enthusiastic, uh, but she's she's a trip. I've been following Panda's story for quite a while now. But uh, I was going to say, Anja didn't forward the entire list of dogs who were going to be euthanized that day. As a Border Collie owner, she focused her attention on that breed. That's what she felt touched by. That's what she felt connected to. And so she will tell you she was not responsible for making it happen, you know. Uh, much like Phil, who, you know, was way more of an angel in my life than I ever could be in his, and he'll tell you that's not how it was either, but believe me, that's how it was. Uh, Angel will also, she's just an angelic type, who I believe she will tell you that she was not responsible, and yet she's part of the effort. If there's enough people that come together in a community sense, uh, yeah, you, you are responsible for at least building awareness or whatever. But the same mentality of focusing, focusing that energy does work. She asked me to forward the story of these border collies. Well, she took one in particular, Match, who, you know, is a black and white border collie that had this one ear up like that. And just a funny dog that kind of reminded me of Panda. And uh, so she asked me if I would forward the story. And um, I decided instead of just forwarding it to everybody I knew, I, I thought, well, this is happening at a Manhattan shelter, so I'm just going to send it to some people I knew in New York. And the idea is to target the audience that you want to reach. And this is good for obvious reasons, but I believe it does one thing. It stops people from becoming desensitized. We get so much email. I'm sure you guys get a ton of email as well just coming to your inbox that's everything from dogs who need home to children who are abused to uh, w the war efforts that are going on to give peace a chance to just... You, you just open up your email and you're like, oh my gosh, where do I focus my energy? And it's just so overwhelming. And that's where people, I believe, become desensitized. And you watch the news and it's all depressing and it's just all that just be, makes a person desensitized. So in this particular case, uh, I really, by the way, I don't think I did anything when I forwarded it to the New York people, but it was the idea that she caused me to want to do that. People know Anja and they know her dog Panda the Border Collie and she keeps them up to date on all Panda's stories. Therefore, she can speak with a certain amount of authority when she talks about the welfare of Border Collies. And this is a really good example. And I've been following Panda's story for a really long time now, like poster pup perhaps, Anja? <laughs> People who feel connected to her and Panda will listen to her because I did. I just I get inundated with a lot of stuff, but, you know, I thought, well, this is a woman who I think is serious about what she's doing, what her message is, and I feel, you know, that she's an authority in this matter, and so therefore I'm going to take it seriously, and I think we can do some good here because we've got somebody at the, at the helm who is uh, focusing this energy, and I think it's very cool. So I did forward the two dogs to the people I knew in New York, uh, but I, I didn't end up doing anything, really. It was a lady on Facebook who came forward and took the one dog, uh, and uh, the, the dog's name was a black border collie named Noel, and uh, the other dog match that Panda that uh, Panda was fighting for, <laughs> that Anja and Panda were fighting for, uh, ended up at least getting out of the no kill zone into another kind of foster style home. I'm not sure exactly, but um, at least you know to some intermediate place. Now both dogs were supposed to be destroyed yesterday, and because of the efforts of these people focusing it. You saw in the thread people from the shelter with people on Facebook and this lady Judy who took the one dog, bless her heart, um, and just just this, the efforts of the people in this. Uh, it was really stressful at times. You know, you're just like, it's getting close. Does anybody, does anybody, does anybody know? Uh, so we were rooting for them. And you know, this, is a, this whole thing is an example of how people can make things happen by just focusing their energy and talking about topics that they are an authority on. Uh, it's the best way to effectively make change happen. I just find that too many issues today are a melting pot which is designed to be fed to desensitize people and it's not working. This inbox full of stuff that I get every day, I can't possibly uh, respond, far less put my efforts towards anything because it's not focused. And um, Anja made a bunch of really good connections yesterday and I, I feel like she has this new calling in her life and that, to me, is the best part of what happened. As far as I'm concerned, out of this whole thing, this one lady found some sense of enlightenment. 
And each of us has our own thing that we are passionate about or that we are an authority on. And I really would encourage you that if you want to make a difference, uh, just to focus your energy on what you know, what you're called to do, what you are good at, because you too could feel this overwhelming enlightenment that Anja feels today. I'm sure she must feel today. And, and her calling in life. She probably woke up today feeling this relief, first of all, because she was in tears the one night. Uh, and she, she feels a sense of relief and a sense of purpose and value in her life. And this is awesome. And I think too many people maybe try to uh, chase a dream that they see on TV, whether they're watching American Idol or, you know, just a movie and think, I'm going to be a movie star or whatever. And they chase this huge, huge dream because they just think it would be cool. Not because they feel connected, not because they're an authority on it. You know, it's just they, they just think it would be cool. Uh, and the problem is they don't feel connected to it. And their audience doesn't feel like they're an authority on it or doesn't feel a sense of connection to it. And um, if the audience doesn't feel connected to you, they're, they're not going to help you in your efforts. And I think Anja, for, for this situation with the Border Collie, they felt connected to her and Panda. And, uh, and for me, uh, I felt a, enough of a connection that I wanted to forward this to some New York people I knew. And, um, and so, uh, oh, do you remember me doing a blog a long time ago where there was that woman who she baked her way out of foreclosure? That was a very cool story, just kind of in short, she, uh, she, her house was about to be foreclosed and she just took something that she was good at. She knew how to bake, <laughs> and so she, she did bake pies and uh, she started selling them, you know, just to whoever she could. And she baked her way, literally, out of foreclosure. And that was just something she was good at, something she was an authority on, and she put it into action and it worked for her. And now, as, as uh, what I can tell, she ended up saving her house and she's growing a healthy business now because of it. So she took what she was good at, what she loved to do, what she was an authority on, she found her calling, and she now can inspire and share her story. Um, so this is, this is cool. I believe each of us should look for this kind of joy in our life. The thing that we know a lot about, the gifts we have, and just channel them towards the greater good in a focused way, much like this this whole border collie incident. <laughs> I think it's uh, very cool. And it shouldn't be towards the greater bank account. You know, you do have to sometimes take that same mentality, like the woman who baked her way out of foreclosure, but uh, towards the greater good. I think this is, this is where we feel that enlightenment that Anja is feeling today. So I signed off today on the Panda Saves Two Border Collies blog, <laughs> wondering if the name Panda helps the cause. After all, the news seems to love sharing panda stories. I also added a quote from the Dalai Lama because I know that Anja loves the Dalai Lama and I said if you want others to be happy practice compassion. If you want to be happy practice compassion. Absolutely I agree with that. <laughs> so I'm very thankful uh, that these people found each other, uh, are building a cool community to uh, help save these dogs and uh, that they're recognizing that if they can focus it, you know. Anja recognized that she's not going to talk about every single dog that's on that euthanizing list. She's going to go for the one that she feels connected to, that she thinks she will be able to make some kind of difference. It works. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I hope you guys have a really uh, awesome Thanksgiving and that you spend lots of time with your loved ones and family and uh, I hope there's no arguing <laughs> that's going to happen in your homes because, boy, we got enough of that, don't we? There's always a, uh, that can happen at uh, Christmas functions or Thanksgiving functions where people just argue. Oh, can't believe it, but it happens. So maybe we could concentrate on not doing that for this, uh, this holiday season. All right. So I will leave you guys today and I will talk to you again tomorrow and from Whiskey Sour and you great, there's whiskey. <laughs> See, sometimes so close. <laughs> From whiskey sour and me. <laughs> Rock on.